All right, guys, you made it to part two of the three-part series. This part will be going over the beta flight. It's going to go over the flight modes, channel mapping, etc., in order to get the radio to communicate properly with the quad. All right, like always, if this video gives you any value, please give us a big thumbs up and a like and subscribe to our channel. And if this video really helps out, any purchase from Grace Navi helps either a pack of quads pack of quads, pack of props. Either a pack of props or a radio and quad or even both. Who are we talking about? Who can? Pack of props. Pack of quads. <laughs> pack of props. <laughs> Plug it in. We have power on the receiver with USB only, so I'm not going to worry about the battery. If you have diatones or the larger ET series, um, you will need a battery for the receiver to work. So if the receiver's not on, that's because you don't have a battery on. <laughs> in this case, it's working, so we're just going to leave it there. I'm going to go to beta flight. I'm going to check here. I'm going to set this up real quick. Um, now this can be used for diatones, the ET series, the tiny series as well. Um, go through configuration. I'm going to make sure motor stop is on. It's going to come off. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Um, just cause I don't like it on an angle mode because if I need to kill the props or anything like that, uh, it's less likely for newer pilots. They're cutting the throttle, forgetting to disarm, less likely to burn up a motor that way. Um, but you do want to learn to get into horizon or acro as soon as possible. Um, arming angle, I'm going to turn that up. 25 degrees is just not enough with a bottom mount battery because the quads don't sit level sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and if you're going to do turtle mode, you need to set this to 180. If you're not using turtle mode, um, then you'll have to set it to maybe 100 or something like What's that. What's a beginner? What a be beginner should do it? If you're straight up beginner, um, if, you're, if you're actually hitting switches, maybe set it to 100. But arming mm -hmm. 180 is fine. That just means it can arm upside down um, completely. So I'm going to set the arming 180. <laughs> air mode, I'm going to have off. I'm not going to have a permanent air mode on. And then this particular quad has a beacon timer, or a buzzer. It doesn't have an onboard buzzer, so I'm going to set it to a beacon, and I'm going to set it to RX set. That will allow me to do it in one of the flight modes. I'm going to save and reboot. And now we, need, we can skip power and battery, skip PID tuning, go to receiver. And we need to make sure our channel mapping is correct. So, here's what we need. We need throttle moving with throttle. We need aileron moving with aileron. We need elevator moving with elevator. And rudder moving with rudder. Good. Yep. And thanks to the Hall Effect gimbals and the jumper radio, we got really, and it was, the radio is calibrated. Um, oh, yeah. So. We got like dead nuts 1500 on this, which is great. You can see my aux one and through five is on 1000. If I flip the switch, you'll see it's at 2,000. Again, that's because I set it to 97.7 negative and 97.7 positive in for my upper and lower extents. Now, my old radio it flickers between 1,500 and 1,499. That's because you have regular gimbals, yeah. Uh, so that's the benefit of the nicer gimbals. All right. All right. Um, so there, we got that. Um, we just want to make sure. I'm going to do the bottom corners, 1,000, 2,000. Now, roll is a little low. So we could turn that up if we wanted to. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay. Um, for yeah, the look at those things snap right back to 1500. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, All right. Moves. So there's that RSSI. We have, see you guys see that moving right there? If I cover the antenna, it might go down a little bit. See that? That's AUX 12. This receiver transmits OSD or RSSI on the OSD. So I need to go here and I need to select AUX 12 and save. Okay. Now, we go to modes. Let me close all these out. I'm actually going to delete these so you guys can see a fresh startup with nothing. All right, so say you get a quad that has nothing there. So what you need to do is go to add range. You have auto select it. Now, keep in mind, because of the RSSI, it might actually set it to aux 12. But in this case, it's not going enough to where it's working. So I flip the switch I want for arming, which is aux 1. And I want the switch to arm when it's towards me. So you can see the little thing moving. Just move it over there. And then we're going to go to angle. That's my flight mode switch, which I set as B. I'm going to flip that one. That's aux 2. And I'm going to set angle all the way to the front. Horizon. Oh, I double click. Sorry. I'm going to switch it there. Again, aux 2, because that's my second switch. And then you'll notice there's no acro. OK? So how am I in acro mode on the third position when neither one of these are selected? But if I hit save, you'll see right now, that's still yellow. Mm -hmm. Once I hit save, it'll actually save that, and then it'll switch over. 
So if you're trying to set these up and you're like, why is nothing working? It's not switching to the what it's supposed to do. That's because you didn't have save. The only one that's not going to do that is ARM on the older flight, uh, the older models of firmware. It will on the newer stuff. It won't allow ARM with USB connected. So in this case, this is an older firmware. That's another reason why I have the battery off in this one. So here, uh, let's see, we're going down. We're going to assign a beeper. All right. So I want to assign beeper. That's my aux three. And I want that beeper to come on at the very end, but I'm also going to do something else. This has a tail LED. It can be annoying when flying line of sight at night, stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that to the middle. So second position, LEDs off, if I had programmed it. And then third position there, once I save it. So you'll see, Let's see here. it's off. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and it's back on, but the motor will be beeping now. This won't beep the motors because the battery's unplugged. Better, yep. um, so you see that, but again, it didn't switch over until I saved it. Uh, let's see. You can do other things like calibrate on switch, etc. Air mode. Now this is where I was talking about how I want air mode on a switch, not always on, because if I am setting up angle mode, uh, angle mode and air mode tend to not play nice together. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is go to my flight mode switch, and instead of just having it only on horizon, I want it on horizon and acro. So I'm sliding it all the way over. I'm just gra grabbing the little slider and moving it over. I'm gonna hit save. And now you see my angle mode, which was above, horizon and acro. Horizon and acro have air mode, and angle mode I do not. Angle mode, I'm purely leaving on for the sake of, oh no, my video went out, I can't see anything, I'm trying to get the quad level again. Angle mode kind of helps you on that. Okay. Uh, it's your best chance of getting it back. Or at least I can do it there. So that, that forces me to have to do this and then arm. Um, do what? I'm sorry. Pre-arm. I'd have to hold this switch. Okay. So you, you that's so you don't accidentally flick it forward, yeah. like I've done sometimes. All right. So All we're right. good to go, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So we've got it configured. Gonna unplug the battery. Put the battery in the quad, or unplug the USB. Plug the battery in the quad. I have my modes. I'm gonna do pre-arm. There you go. Now you'll see angle mode, horizon mode, acro mode. So it doesn't try to level, tries to level, and that's angle mode. All right, so that's how, that's it, right? Yep, and now remember, because I set a pre-arm switch on this radio, because it has a nice momentary toggle, I have to hold it, then arm. And I'm gonna put it in uh, acro mode so you can see the motor spin. You'll notice right now, nothing's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing. However, if I pre-arm, and then hit the arm switch, let go. And that's just an, a nice feature because if you're holding on your strap and it actually hits, oh. you know, part of your body, your arm, another quad, or you reach like over the, table. the you reach over the table to grab yeah. the battery and you, all right. So that's just a nice little safety function there. Good job. That's part one, jumper slash open TX configurations. Anything, any tips you wanted to get up there? So remember endpoints, 1000 low, 1500 neutral, 2000 high, no lower, no higher. Um, or as close as possible. Yeah. I mean, within a one or two points is fine. Uh, set up your modes. And also if you're running newer beta flight, you have to unplug the USB and power cycle the quad before it'll work. Okay. Again, this works with the jumper. This works with the X9D from FreeSky. This works with the QX7 S series. Yeah. Anything running OpenTX, so don't let this fool you, and don't let this fool you, because it works for pretty much anything that's running this particular software, which is Betaflight. Yep. Yeah. All right. There we go.